Hey YouTube, Dawson Writer here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some more broad thoughts on the Hasbro era and the current state of the Power Rangers franchise. Based on some of the recent news, I talked more about the situation in regards to the Lightning Collection hiatus yesterday, but I had a lot of thoughts swimming around about the franchise in general that I didn't want to bog that video down with. So this one's going to kind of be more of a freeform discussion. Again, I still think of it as ABC Family, but a freeform discussion about my thoughts on how everything's been handled and my thoughts on the future. So if you didn't know in regards to the current status of the franchise, as I just mentioned yesterday, we got announcement, or not announcement, but news, that they are going to be taking a hiatus for the Lightning Collection for at least the year 2024. We don't know what's going to happen after that, or what kind of other merchandise will be around, if there'll be anything else coming out, um, how long the hiatus will be, when it comes back, will it be the Lightning Collection, will it be something else entirely? But we know that, like, for the most part, we're going to have an extremely quiet year for Power Rangers merchandise going into 2024. That goes into the other aspect of the current status quo, which is, in all likelihood, even before we faced the current writers and actors strike, we were in for a hiatus for the show for at least the year 2024. As, you know, again, current status quo, it has been officially announced multiple times that there was a reboot series in the works, and, you know, they never officially had an announcement where they said, Cosmic Theory is the last season in the continuity and the reboot is happening, but using basic common, basic common sense, that seems to be what their plan was, is Cosmic Fury was going to wind the franchise down, as it currently is, and then after about a year plus, they would come out with their reboot show, as they did sign the deal with Netflix. Now, as of right now, it's been stuck in development hell. That's true, and especially with how uncertain things are, especially with announcements about, like, the Lightning Collection, it's not entirely unlikely that they could shelve this pro project indefinitely. But I'm just saying, as of right now, and as of... Many years in history, the reboot was officially announced by Hasbro. I only say that because I still get people that are like, why are you talking about the reboot series? That's not, a, that's a rumor. Even if it gets canceled, it was not a rumor. That was officially announced by Hasbro multiple times. They made multiple official announcements, especially when they hired Jonathan Entwistle and when they did the Netflix deal. Again, I'm not saying it couldn't fall through and they couldn't shelve it, but I'm just saying that was and currently is an official announcement. It is not a rumor. That is a thing that is happening. And again, all signs point to the main show winding down. I feel like there's people that are just in denial that are like, la 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 la, when it comes to like, dude, the main show's ending. It's just, that's happening. Regardless of what happens with the reboot, um, it will be a very long time before we see something like the current show. But that is the current state, you know, of the franchise. It's not looking good. It looks like we're going to be in for a very quiet period. Um, I'm going to say right off the bat that I'm 90% sure we will get the reboot series, just may not be in the form or the time we think it is. You know, it very well could be in about two to three years after these strikes clear up and they're able to, you know, move forward with whatever they've been talking about right now. However, it could be due to all the roadblocks they face, they could shelve it for a while and we could wait and then just leave the brand dormant aside from stuff like the comics currently for a while. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, the comics currently announced a year-long event. So we have the comics for at least another year. Um, may, I think they might do a wait and see with that and if it still does well, they might keep the comics around. But again, outside of stuff like the comics or niche merchandise like statues and Hot Topic stuff, oh sorry, I just saw a bug, and Hot Topic stuff and stuff like that, um, you know, it's going to be a very dormant period. And, uh, you know, it's popular amongst the loud, hardcore fandom to hate on Hasbro. And, again, I mentioned in yesterday's video, it's tough to make these videos because I'm not trying to come across like an apologist, but just someone that's not amongst that, like, basically a Sith mentality of absolutes, of, like, either they're our enemy or they're our savior. And it's like, that's just not the case. I think Hasbro has made a lot of stumbles, a lot of mistakes, um, but I think that they've also faced a lot of um, outside things, like the pandemic, that have kind of screwed up their decision making, and I maybe they haven't always reacted the best to it. But I think that's something at least worth noting. You know, again, I'm not an apologist, and I'm not saying that they couldn't have done things better, but I'm just saying that there has been some things that I think have contributed to it. I think that when it comes to how they've handled things, there's been a lot of things I like. I'll just say that I like the ambition. I like the idea of ending the current main show and doing a refresh, a complete refresh. I like that idea. Unfortunately, as of this moment, that's only ever been an idea. 
But I like that idea. I like the core ideas of some of the things that they have laid down. I like a lot of the ideas of stuff I've done with Lightning Collection, and I continue to love the comics, which of course is a carryover from Saban. Uh, but in terms of the way they've handled it, it's been very awkward, I think, for two primary reasons. Number one, as of this moment, like, the lion's share of the Hasbro era has just been Neo Saban 2.0, which apparently at least somewhat has to do with them having to honor previous contracts. I think from what I understand, when they bought the franchise, Beast Morphers was already in motion, and they had to honor a three-year contract with Nick, which meant Beast Morphers Seasons 1, 2, and Dino Fury 1, as it's been, I think, mostly confirmed that Dino Fury was supposed to only be one season. So they kind of had to honor that contract and keep things going. So I think that, obviously, that's why the show felt so similar, because outside of being able to do some slight changes, they were like, okay, we have to honor this contract, we might as well just leave this, you know, machine up that's already running. And I think it was also probably, this is just my inference, but it was also probably a bit saying, well, yeah, then we'll keep the brand around. We have to keep it around anyway. We can kind of keep it in, in the public eye a little bit, or the public eye, but not really the public eye, but you know what I mean. Keep it around while we work on our own stuff in the background, which is kind of smart. And I think that's probably why they renewed it for Dino Fury Season 2 and why they did the Netflix deal for Cosmic Fury. Is like, well, this is already set up and running. We want to have something so that things keep running, and so we have something for the anniversary while we work on our stuff in the background. But unfortunately, it led to this really awkward transition and mixed message for the era. Now, in regards to the reboot, I think that that's the other thing, is their approach to that, which, again, I'm, I'm sure they've made a lot of wrong bloody calls, but at the same time, I think that it's kind of this perfect storm of, I would say their biggest mistake is probably their apprehension. Um, I think that, and I don't think that's necessarily a mistake, but I think that's probably um, what didn't help them. Because 2017 movie, as much as I love it and think there was potential there, obviously didn't do so well financially. So even though they had designs to do a reboot movie initially, and a show, and a whole new thing, they were likely very apprehensive and cautious about how to approach it. Which is a double-edged sword, because it's like, I think that's only smart after coming off of a previous unsuccessful reboot attempt, and you're trying something similar, obviously you're going to be apprehensive. And I think it's smart to be apprehensive. Again, this is what I'm talking about. When I'm not being an apologist, I'm like, that's just be that's common sense. It's kind of like Saban hit the ground running. That's why Samurai was so awkward. Which, you know, it kind of worked out for them to a degree. But, I mean, the, the, the show quality was so weird and such a weird direct translation of Sh Samurai combined with MMPR is because they didn't take a minute to think, like, what do we want to do here? They're like, nope, just go! Let's go, 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 go! Like, that's why. No, they literally said, go, go, samurai. That's what happened. So, Hasbro was in a different situation because they were able to leave things running and then think about it. But I think, again, the apprehension is a double-edged sword because I think it's a smart move, but I think it likely caused them to overthink things, and then unfortunately, as they were probably trying to plan the best approach, we ran into the pandemic which I talked about in my video where I discussed the strike, where I talked about how we need to keep in mind that the strike is going to delay things instead of viewing it as, it's still delayed! Hasbro hates the brand! Hasbro hates Earth! Like, no, they just got delayed. And uh, the pandemic, I think people, I mentioned this again, but in case you didn't see that video, I think people really underestimate how much that harmed Hasbro's future plans. Because obviously, as mentioned in that video, I'm sorry if you watched that video already, that put delays on every single production, including Power Rangers. But once the dust settled and we were starting to rebuild entertainment stuff, the landscape changed. You know, uh, movies are back, but people are much more selective about what they see, both because they got used to not going to the theater and because the prices went up. So you'll see that now, where franchises, which used to be a sure thing, aren't doing so well. So obviously Power Rangers was not a sure thing, because pre-pandemic in 2017 it bombed. So they likely were like already in their head about like, how do we make this successful and not screw up? And then now you have the situation where you have an even slimmer chance of it being successful in theaters. So they probably reevaluated then, which is what led to the Netflix deal and doing streaming instead. And we even know there was a couple deleted scripts. So I'm not saying they didn't make some bad decisions and I think screwed up a bit in some places, but I think the pandemic was a major roadblock. I think it caused delays because they were already overthinking what they were going to do, and then they had to reevaluate it once the landscape of entertainment changed. And then amongst that, you had stuff like Ant Whistle got incredibly busy, which is why they hired like another showrunner to work alongside him. And so you have stuff like that where they were taking too long, the pandemic delayed things, and then afterwards they needed to reevaluate. Like, I'm glad they did. I know we're not in a good spot, but I'm glad that we didn't put the pedal to the metal after the pandemic ended 
and try to do something immediately because I think it probably would have failed and we would arguably be in a similar spot. But I think you're in kind of a better spot if you kind of willfully go on a quiet place where you can kind of control the narrative more rather than, you know, having two bombs behind you. Because I feel that if they put the pedal to the metal either when they immediately bought the franchise or after the pandemic, it surely would have bombed. And it, I think it's even harder to rebuild from two bombs than it is to sort of really take a step back before you do anything. So I think in a way that's smart, even though it's not creating the greatest situation right now. Now where we sit when I'm recording this right now, they haven't announced that we're canceling the reboot at this moment. I think that it seems more likely than ever it could get shelved or take longer than we're thinking. Um, but as of this moment, it's still officially announced. There was even just recently an interview where they said it's still in development. I know that's like a party line thing, and it could mean that a cancellation is imminent. I'm just saying, reiterating, it's an officially announced thing, guys. It's not a rumor. Even if it gets canceled, at one point, it was officially announced. Um, so I'm thinking that one or two things could happen. I think that, again, this strike is going to put a delay like on anything they're doing right now. But I think that it could end up that they still just move forward with their plans. And as a result of taking a quiet period after Cosmic Fury and a quiet period with the toys, it will come out in anywhere from two to three years. Or I think that they could just reevaluate um, and shelve it indefinitely and come back later, maybe in like five years. And as much as I really want to see this reboot and see what they have and restore some faith in the brand and get some positive energy back in, I almost wouldn't entirely mind that them just taking a beat, maybe five years, and just really assess, assess it and, and come back. And I think you can create a more strong media narrative if you do that, meaning instead of awkwardly going from the end of the current iteration with Cosmic Fury and then immediately into a reboot more or less, you kind of go, you know, you go away for a while and then you come back. And then you can have all those headlines of like, the Power Rangers is back, you know, the long dormant franchise is returning with a brand new refresh. And you kind of get that excitement and that media coverage of the Power Rangers returning. And also you get extra time to work on it. I think that might honestly be best, or maybe a marriage between the two, where it's not quite as long as five years or an extended break, but it's not immediately trying to pick up the pieces after this, this uh, strike. You know, I can't say for certain, but I can say for certain that whether it's within a couple years, in five years, or if somebody buys the brand down the road, or Hasbro picks it up in 20 years, there will be a reboot show. It just won't happen the way we're thinking. You know, I, it's funny because I'm, I'm usually a very negative person in almost everything, and I have negative aspects when it comes to my Power Rangers Toku fandom as well, but I feel like I'm just more positive about this because, again, I, I know that Power Rangers isn't a franchise that will get shelved forever. I think it will come back in some form or another. I think, like as I said, it's not as notable of a brand as Star Wars or Transformers, but it is a big enough brand to not go dormant forever. It's a big enough brand that somehow, some way, people are gonna wanna do something with it always in the future. You know, when I was thinking about this video, as cheesy as this may sound, and I think I tweeted this even, uh, the, the quote that came to mind for me was that Doctor Who quote from the end of time, which is, this song is ending, but the story never ends. But that's about it for this one, guys. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell so you get notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.